Remember the survey that I put out to ask which drawing apps you guys are using on Android? The results are in. Let's look at the question again. What drawing apps do you use on Android? You can choose the three apps you use most often. If the app you use is not listed, you can write down the name of the app in the next section. So these are the options I have provided. Now these are checkboxes so people can select up to three drawing apps. These are the results from the survey which I have already tabulated and arranged according to popularity. So I managed to get a total of 81 people to vote to contribute to this survey. So we can see the most popular drawing app on Android OS is Infinite Painter. By the way, from the survey, we know which are the popular apps, but we don't know the reason why people choose those drawing apps and also how many hours they work when they are drawing. So if you have participated in the survey, do let me know in the comment section below why you choose the drawing app that you choose and also how often or how many hours do you work when you are drawing. I'm not surprised at Infinite Painter being the most popular app because it's a pretty good drawing app and it's a one-time purchase so it's really worth the money. I myself use Infinite Painter for drawing although not as much compared to using concepts. I like using Infinite Painter because of the minimal user interface and it's pretty intuitive and straightforward and simple to use as well. So in second place, we have Clip Studio Paint, which I am actually quite surprised or not. Anyway, Clip Studio Paint is obviously a very powerful drawing app with lots of features. It probably has the most number of features compared to all the other apps. CSP is definitely a top quality app that is capable of producing professional artworks and illustrations. There are some downsides though and those downsides are not limited to the drawing performance. So the first downside is this is a subscription based software on the tablet so you will have to pay monthly and the cost can add up. The other downside is there is a lot of user interface elements, so this app is actually more suited for use on a display that is larger. So let me know in the comment section below which tablet or which screen size you are using if you are using Clip Studio Paint as your main illustration app. And let me know why you choose to pay for the subscription when there are other drawing apps that you can buy with a one-time purchase. So the Third most popular drawing app is Concepts which is more of a sketching app and this app is very different compared to other drawing apps because it's based on vectors, it's based on math and clean lines although they do have some pretty amazing textured brushes which is one of the main reasons why I love to use Concepts. Now Concepts is I would say a one-time purchase although there is a subscription based model as well but you can pay a one-time purchase to unlock most of the tools and buy some of the brushes. Concepts is quite straightforward to use and one thing I or two things that I really like about Concepts is there is this infinite canvas so you can zoom in and draw, zoom out all the visuals will be sharp because it's vector and you will not run out of space. And because the artworks are based on vectors, you will not run out of storage space as well because the file sizes are really small. I'm actually quite familiar with concepts and I have created several tutorials for this app. So if you guys want to learn how to draw with concepts, you can check out the many free tutorials that I have on my YouTube channel. The fourth most popular drawing app is Sketchbook which is an app that I don't really use because I personally find the user interface not to be as intuitive compared to other apps. But this is the fourth most popular app for some reason. So let me know why you like to draw with Sketchbook, like what are the pros and cons because I'm really not familiar with this app and its features. There are many other drawing apps on this list and I don't use them or don't use them as often so you guys will really have to let me know the reasons why you prefer to use those apps instead of the top 4 or top 5 most popular apps. 
At number five, we have two apps because they have the same number of votes. We have IBS Paint X and Critar. I don't use IBS Paint X, so I can't say much about it. As for Critar, I've known this app for a very long time, even though I don't really use it. Now, Krita has a lot of features. I think in terms of number of features, it probably can match Clip Studio Paint. So I'm not sure why it's um, at number five or at number six. I thought you should rank higher because this app is free. The one main downside for Krita is um, this app uses a lot of user interface elements as well. So it's best used on the display that is big. And one nice feature I like about Krita is you can choose to save the artworks into a folder. You don't have to save the artwork inside the app itself. When you have your artworks inside a folder, it's very easy to back up your artworks. You can just copy that folder out onto external storage or onto a cloud drive. So at number seven, we have High Paint. Now, High Paint used to be called Huion Sketch, but it's now being rebranded as High Paint and it's ad based, and there are many irritating ads. At the time of making this video, there are no purchase options for High Paint, so those ads are here to stay. Now, the user interface of High Paint is quite similar to Procreate on the iPad. I think the design of this app is heavily inspired by Procreate. This app is easy to understand and to use, so you can get started with drawing very quickly and you can figure out all the tools and the features on your own. So the only downside is many ads and also it doesn't support as many finger gesture shortcuts compared to Procreate. At number eight, we have Midibank Paint. On the iPad and Android tablets, it's called Midibank Paint, and on the desktop, this app is called Midibank Paint Pro. The feature set for the tablet version and the desktop version for Windows and Mac OS is different. Obviously, the desktop version will have four of the features, whereas for the tablet version, we have a subset of features. And the UI is also different for the tablet. For the tablet, there are bigger buttons, the menu bar is gone, so to find some of the commands and functions, you will have to go within those, uh, behind those buttons. I do enjoy using Medibank Paint, and this is a very easy app to understand and to use. The limitations would be the lack of brush customization. This app, by the way, is free to use. However, to unlock all the features, you will have to pay for the subscription. For the free license, you get up to three gigabytes of online storage, which is nice because you can draw on the tablet, save your file to the cloud, and open the app on your desktop and download that file onto your local storage. So that's how I back up all the artworks that I have created with Minibank Paint. I remember I used to pay a one-time purchase to remove the ads, but that option is now no longer available if I'm not wrong. So now if you want to remove the ads, you will have to pay for the subscription. At number nine, we have Artflow. I don't use this app, so I can't say much about this app. The only thing I know about this app is the UI design is very minimalist. For the next few apps, I will talk about them collectively because I don't know much about them. There is Heavy Paint, Pen Up, which if I'm not wrong, is a popular app in South Korea. And there is ArtRage Vitae, Clover Paint, Taya Sui Sketches. So on this list, there are drawing apps with loads of features as well as apps without that many features. So there are apps that are for professional artists as well as apps that are for beginners and for casual users. And these are the other apps that you guys have mentioned. Layer Paint HD, Leonard, Samsung Notes, Schedule, Sony Sketch, Togo Tuner, Touch Notes. It's interesting to see the results from this survey. So I'm going to create a similar survey to find out the most popular drawing apps on the iPad and iPad OS. So if you happen to be using an iPad for drawing, 
I would like to invite you to join that survey and I will tabulate the results to show you guys which apps people are using on the iPad. The link to the new survey will be in the video description below and I am expecting more votes because there should be more people using iPads, right? Alright, I hope this video is somewhat interesting. See you guys in the next video. Bye!